Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for something a bit different. Today I'm going to be taking a sort of a first look at The Last Starship, which is the latest game from Introversion Software. Now at the moment it's still very, very early access, so I mean this this the um the actual early access al pre-alpha playtest came out on Monday and it's now Tuesday as I'm recording this, so I um it literally, literally became available to the um to to a to, to a few limit, uh, limited number of people yesterday so so this means it's there's various bits of placeholder art as you can see by the way people are just sort of drifting around rather than moving a bit more smoothly and there's an, also not an enormous amount of content yet but what there is does seem quite interesting and I can see a lot of potential for future uh, future development here and, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing where the game goes so I spent a few hours yesterday playing it and doing a bit of a um, bit of a playtest, having a look at some of the different types of missions you can do. I basically, I did the sort of the standard courier type missions where you accept a contract, it tells you to take some boxes somewhere, you do that, you get some money for it, and then I had to play around with making a combat ship as well, where I um, built a ship obviously optimised for combat and uh, and uh, flew around in that, seeing what it was, seeing how things went. So as you can see in the background here, at the moment. But the first thing you do, you can you can choose which of a couple of ships to start with. This is one of them, and this comes with a relatively small amount of money and all of the stuff you need in order to make an operational spaceship. Uh, the other one comes with an enormous amount of money, or the other or the other ones, because there's several of them. The other ones come with a significantly larger amount of money, but none of the bits and pieces that you're going to need in order to get a spaceship up and running and, and moving around and so on. So at the moment, the guys are running around like headless chickens, setting everything up as, as I'm telling them to do it. And so we'll uh, we'll sort of let them let them get on with this for a little while, and then uh, come back to them and, and see see what the ship looks like once everything's built. Okay, so we now have the basics of the spaceship built up. This is a, a nice, simple. Fun but functional spaceship. We've got a couple of engines on the back, these will allow the ship to move around. We've got a reactor that produces power, so the reactor and the engines both turn fuel, they both use fuel. So the um, we've got a, and we've got a loader in here, which if I switch over to construction mode, it's slightly easier to see. And it's got the the, uh, the bottle of fuel in there as well. This is construction mode you can see at the moment, which is sort of a um, it allows you to tell tell the guys where to put things. It allows you to build things like cables, the red lines, and pipes, which is the yellow line. Well, the, this yellow line is blue, but it's, sorry. It's, this yellow line is yellow because it's a fuel pipe. This pipe here is blue because it's an oxygen pipe. And in this particular case, we've got a bottle here which is emptying out oxygen out, out into the air duct, which is then blowing it out into the rest of the ship. And we're building up the level of oxygen in here. If I use the overlays, I can see information. So we've now got decent amounts of oxygen. So all the crew have taken off their spacesuits and they're now happy to sort of just wander around in, the, in their flight suits instead. We've got a certain amount. Let's turn the overlay off again. We've got a certain amount of extra stuff that we've brought with us as well. So up here we've got an FTL drive. So, so I need to install that as well. So let's get them to do that. So I say install. I want to put the FTL drive. Let's put it over here by the reactor. And if I drop it in here with the red dot already on the cable, then I won't need to run any extra cables around to make make sure it's put in the right place. So the guy runs over, grabs it, brings it over, and he'll start assembling it. We've got control uh, speed controls up at the top here that'll allow me to choose how fast the game game time is running. So then I was running at double speed to get the, everything built up a bit quicker. We've also got some other cargo on the ship as well. We've got uh, some extra fuel in case we need it once the uh, in case this one gets used up and we need some extra fuel. We've got these these green modules are FTL fuel cells essentially, and you you use one of these each time you go into FTL. So each time you you do a hyperspace jump. Got a couple of bottles of oxygen, a bottle of water, and a couple of bricks of food as well. So we'll see these gradually get depleted as the um, as the ship carry, um, as, as the crew basically survive on the spaceship. We've also got a small habitation area upstairs that currently is basically just placeholder art. This is shows um, that I've got eight cabins of which five are in use, and I'm gradually accumulating sewage in here as well, which is lovely. Um, so eventually, if I wanted this ship to run for a long time, I'd need to put in some sort of system to, to deal with that sewage. I haven't found out what the maximum amount you can accumulate before you have to do something with it is, but eventually it will it will fill up. So at the moment, I'm in in a in a um, in a in an area a sector, and at the moment, if I look on the sector map, we'll see that I'm currently here, and there's a colony in this area. So this means I can trade with them. Over here, there's a shipyard and a colony, which means I can do trade, and I can also improve the ship. So I could build a bigger habitation area. I could I could do other sort of things like that. There are other things around. So this one's got some asteroids around. So I could, if I had a mining laser, I could go here and do some mining. Sometimes you get areas that have hostiles in them as well. So you can go out and you can engage in combat with those. And if I wanted to go somewhere, then I can select it on here. It get, you get the, uh, the line going off to it and a highlight for that area. And then if I go in and get, say I want to go FTL, I can then prepare to jump to that area and I can head off over there. Um, 
most most sectors when you're in them will offer contracts now this one because it's the starter sector you only get some specialized ones which is doing um, an analysis mission which where you go out and you 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 analyze the 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 anomaly so the in, in the game there is this and um, wrong button this one there is this anomaly over here with some sort of giant weird black hole thing that's gradually growing you, in fact you can see it growing in real time as if you watch it it's, it's getting slowly bigger and it will eventually swallow up all of this star sector and then so I could, uh, by which point I have to go to here and then jumped off to the next one and then it'll carry on growing and it'll eventually it'll swallow that sector and the next sector afterwards and so on so you're forever running away from this thing and it gives you a bit of a sort of um, impetus to keep moving and a bit of sort of pressure time pressure on the game so it's not just sort of fly back and forth between colonies trading and doing missions you have you if you just hang around you will find that things will like things will eventually catch up with you and you won't be able to escape however while I'm here near this colony I can also trade with them so I can buy various different types of resources so I can buy things like I could buy another reactor if I wanted to I could buy batteries which the battery will store power so you can use it a bit faster if the reactor isn't generating power quickly enough you can buy tanks to store fluids you can buy um, you can buy a co2 scrubber which you'll need eventually in order to turn the co2 as you can see up here gradually my my crewmen are my crew are producing co2 and if that gets too high then they will eventually die from it and so you need co2 scrubbers and various air processing facilities in order to pull that back out and turn it back into oxygen um, you've got similar things for water as well, where you need to turn the sewage back into 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 water, and if you do that, then you can uh, you can again get a, a bit of a closed loop system. That said, I'm not certain whether it's a properly closed loop system or whether you need to occasionally top it up with a little bit of fresh water, a little bit of fresh um, uh, fresh oxygen. But I, I didn't get a chance to find that out. But there's also lots of other things you can get in here. So you can get thrusters, which allow you to make the ship a bit more a bit more manoeuvrable. You can get um, various types of weapons. So you get a Gatling gun, which is good for you shooting down um, short range enemies, uh, small small enemies. It's, they're, they're designed for point defense essentially. You've got the rail gun, which is good for against bigger ships and, the, and a very long range. And the cannon, which comes somewhere in between. It's a medium range weapon that does quite a lot of damage um, and is again good against big ships got mining lasers for mining so there's, there's various different types of emissions you can go off and do and then down here you've got all the various different consumables so we've got fuel that you'll burn through whenever you're firing your main engine so if you if you're in combat you get through enormous quantities of that but we'll talk a bit more about combat later we've got oxygen and FTL charge um, bullets ammunition water food deuterium. so these are all things that you'll get through as you do stuff you can also have logistics drones which you can launch from your ship and they'll fly out and they'll they'll collect bits and pieces that are lying around from ships you've blown up or they'll go out and repair your ship if you picked up damage and you can also gain extra crewmen which is useful because crewmen run around as you see they, they run around doing all the things you need them to do on inside the ship and so if you've got more of them they can do these things more efficiently whether it's stacking boxes or whether it's loading ammunition into weapons that sort of thing all of these things all of these things are done by the crew and so if you add in more then you can you can do them faster also in the construction area, so you saw me installing the various different bits and pieces, different modules I'd, I'd, I had provided with me. I can also dismantle any of them as well and put them back in their boxes if I want to move them somewhere else. You can lay cables and pipes and you can also put out storage areas and this is similar to um, games like RimWorld or Prison Architect. So we can say I might want to put um, mission cargo on the side over here. Let's put that there. Maybe we want to put the FTL charges <clears throat> next to the FTL drive over here so they don't have to be carried as far. <coughs> Oxygen can be put here by the oxygen machine. Fuel I definitely want to have over here by the fuel unloader. And so the yeah, they'll they'll run around, they'll move all the things around as sensibly to, to try and sort of keep keep things in, in in sensible places. And at the moment, let's keep the water and the food all over here, so it's a bit more out of the way. And they sort of, they sort of, they'll wander around, they'll pick everything up. If I want to see what they're up to, I can click on the jobs button and it'll show me these these things. So a green line is something that's currently either either currently being done or there is someone on their way to go and do that particular job at the moment. Yellow lines mean there is a job reserved for this item, um, but at the moment nobody's doing it because you've run out of people. So no, there we go, that one just went green because this guy finished moving the, the FTL fuel over and now he's going over to pick that one up. So there's a nice feel as, as to what's going on there. Um, we do also have, I haven't mentioned this yet, but we have the tactical view. This is only, this is only really relevant in combat, but it allows you to tell the ship how you want it, what direction you want it to fly, what direction you want it to point in. So it's fired up the engines on the back there to, so it can turn the ship. And if I want, I could fly over towards this transport vessel and have a, this transport ship here and have a look at that. So let's fly over and, and at least get close to it. Now we don't have to worry about real physics in this game. If you turn the if you t take the throttle back down all the way to zero, then the ship will just drift to a halt. So we're playing with sort of we're playing with Star Wars physics in this game, I'm afraid. But never mind. 
as you can see there we go drift, drift back to hold if i switch back out of the um out of this uh, tactical view we can now see it have come over this this ship is now quite close but i don't own the ship so i can't see inside it in quite the same way i can with mine so let's uh, let's get moving um if I, had, if I now bring up the FTL thing, I can say prepare to jump, and this will then tell the ship to turn, so it's pointing in the right direction to do the FTL jump to the sector I selected on the sector map earlier. And once that's ready, I can now say jump. We get a very bright flash of light, which is a bit distracting if you're if it's, if it's got dark around you, and uh, it helps to wake you up a bit. But now we're, we're flying to the next um, the next star system in the sector, and as you can see, this, is, this uh, line is gradually growing to show as, as we fly across. Let's speed it up a bit so I get there slightly sooner. You may also notice that if I click the slow button there, it doesn't actually pause the game, it just brings it down to very, very slow speed. So this means when you go into combat, you can use that to drop speed down and when you, when you want to do, when you, or when you're wanting to fiddle around with things but you don't want time to pass because the anomaly is still getting bigger and bigger. And if we have another look on the sector map, you can see it's grown a lot, it's almost, it's almost swallowed this one. And the nice thing is, if you mouse over any of the um, sectors, it show, uh, sorry, the uh, star systems in the sector, it'll show you how big the anomaly would be when you got there, which is why I can't go to this one, because it would have been completely swallowed up by the anomaly by the time I got there. But now I've come here to somewhere new, somewhere new. Now there's some proper contracts available. So looking in here, there's a various, various options of one, ones in here that I can do. So these ones are greyed out because I can't currently do them because this one requires thrusters so you can manoeuvre up to a wrecked ship. And, and, and Oh, it's spinning out of control as well. So it, yeah, you need thrusters to be able to go and, and, and click, go to that one. This one, I need at least 16 free cabins. So until I've built some more, more um, cabin space on my ship, I can't do that one. But this one down here... And these, this is in the sector, Star System Seven. Um, oh, but it's a very. It, but this one requires you to deliver the goods within three minutes. Uh, so you get a bonus to the pay if you can do that, but you also get a penalty of not getting paid if you if you miss that. And I did one of these last time. I didn't quite make it in time, so I only got a little bit of the money. So those aren't really worth doing, I think. Although it does pay twice as much as the one that that doesn't have a time time um, penalty on. It. So you'll notice that a lot of these missions have these numbers next to them. So for example, this this one is a this one down here is a difficulty one because it's a mission and that's the lowest you can get so it's a, a difficulty one because it's a mission this one is difficulty two because it's a mission with a time uh, with a time uh, requirement this one is a difficulty two because um, why is this difficulty two because it's a mission and because it's got a meteor shower in the area so you'll either take massive quantities of defense uh, sort of damage or you need to have gatling guns for to provide point defense for the meteors uh, this one is a difficulty two because it's a mission, and then the second difficulty comes because you need to go to a no, sorry, that's a, that's a time pressure one. Uh, this one is two because it requires you to have cabins um, and so and so on. No, it's no, sorry, it's because it's a sector jump away. So you get you get extra difficulty marks on these things based on additional things like it being in another star system, there being a time limit, there being enemy ships to attack, uh, there being me meteors in the area, that sort of thing. So you can you can go and you can choose what sort of level of difficulty you want. I believe, let's have a quick look at the sector map. Yes, I'm now I'm now in a um, in a shipyard, in a, sorry, in a, in a star system that has a shipyard as well. So there's some additional construction options here. I can look in the shipyard, I can add additional habitation decks. So for example, I could come in here and go, right, let's add in a big chunk like that. And I've now got 22 cabins. Um, I can also install armor if I get to want to go into combat. I can build scaffolding or I can build interior exterior. I can make my ship bigger or different shape if I want to as well. And now if I go back into the contracts, we'll see that I should now be able to do some of the passenger base missions. So here we go. This one has 16 people um, and they want to go to a, they want to go to another sector. So I could um, so I could now accept this mission. And then if we go back up to normal speed, we'll see that a, 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 a shuttle will fly in like this with these um, with the extra people I've just said I, I, I've just agreed to give to give a lift to. So the shuttle will arrive here. It'll unload all the people. And they can then they'll come running in and they'll go up the up the ladder into the into the habitation deck above. And if we now have a look on the habitation deck, you can see it's filling up with uh, with all those extra people who I've just uh, just allowed onto my ship. So we can now have a look at the contracts as well. So there was that other one that was uh, a nice easy deliver cargo to nearby star system. So we'll accept that one as well. And again, we'll have a um, let's close the habitation deck overlay and the jobs overlays. We'll see that now a ship will come in with the cargo for this mission. It flies in the docks like this. Doom. And then the boxes just appear like this and all of my crewmen will now come running over and they'll start moving the boxes around because you see there's only a limited area that the ship can unload into so until these boxes have been moved off into a tidier area 
um, there isn't anywhere, there isn't space to unload the rest of them. But now we've got them all, all stacked up and ready to be transported. I could also, I've got still got almost um, 8,000 space bucks left, so I could buy a little bit of extra stuff if I wanted to. And I think having some more fuel will probably be useful. So let's buy, let's buy a couple of those. And that's taken $6,000 immediately because fuel is really expensive. And I've got a load of extra people on my ship, so maybe I should consider some extra food as well, which is a lot cheaper. So let's have some of that. We'll buy that. And once again, that'll be brought in by shuttle and the guys will then automatically sort it out and put it into the places where it belongs. So, this is arriving. While that's arriving, let's have another look at the sector map. So now it tells me there's a delivery available over here. So I can say I want to go there. Um, now once everything's been brought on and the ship goes away, like that, I can then say, okay, let's... I said, I want to go here. Okay, so I'll set, set my destination. Okay, there's a big X appearing over here. So, so maybe that's saying it doesn't want to fly through. I think that means it doesn't want to fly through the asteroid field because potentially that's dangerous or my hyperspace, my hyperdrive can't do that. So maybe I could go up here and then to here or perhaps back. Let's go back here because I'm worried about how much this thing's going to expand because that, that looks slightly further that way. So we'll go here first, see how this goes. And we'll do these jumps. So I'll, f I'll skip forward a bit now until we've completed the jumps, or fast forward a bit while we, while we do this, and then we'll um, we'll see if I can manage to complete the uh, the first the first part of the mission and drop this cargo off. So now that I've arrived at that, um, now that I've arrived here, and there's, there's a huge number of new um, new contracts I could take out here. Although a lot of them aren't are not ones that are available for the sh sort of ship I've got, but I can now deliver this one. So I can unload this cargo, turn in the contract. Um, and we should now see the sh another shuttle will come in and it'll pick up the goods I've brought over here. So this is working. This is uh, basically how the how the simple trade missions work. You bring you bring stuff from one place to another, you get money for it. And now once my crewmen sort of wake up and realise they're supposed to be doing some work, they'll bring the uh, bring the boxes over. So one of the things I would quite like is a sort of slightly smarter system for managing your crew crewmen. Uh, for something like this, it doesn't really matter because I wasn't in any particular hurry. But when you're in combat, it would be nice to be able to say battle stations and put them standing right by the um, by the guns are supposed to be reloading. So there we go. I've made another 8,000 space bucks from that, and presumably from here I could now I could buy some extra stuff in if I wanted. I could pick up some uh, some weapons or some more FTL charges, all that all that sort of stuff. And now the next thing, oops, the next thing to do would be to fly off, would be to fly over to the the next sector thing over here, and then fly off onto the next one to drop those passengers off. Or maybe I'd want to make do a little bit more wandering around in this sector first, just to get a little bit more, uh, just to sort of min max it as much as I can before I go off somewhere else. So the other thing I want to talk about um, that gives you a, a sort of bit of an, a, a feel feel for the sort of the courier missions type part part of the game. I also want to talk a bit about the uh, the combat, which went um, okay. <laughs> My first attempt at combat went absolutely horrifically, if I'm being honest. I um, I, I, I really struggle to use use the interface to, to do anything particularly useful. Um, but here's some here's some footage from my um, from from the stream where I was messing around with bringing uh, with, with so it's a little bit later on and trying and, and um, being a little bit more successful at combat. So a lot of it is a case of sort of making sure you've got all of the weapons on the side of the ship loaded. You're pointing the weapons sensibly at the enemy ships you want to attack. And as I, as you can see here, I put all of my guns on the same basically on the same side of the ship so I could deliver massive broadside attacks to anything that uh, anything came near me. But that, that also meant I needed to spend quite a lot of time manoeuvring in an attempt to point all the guns at the, at the enemy ships. But again, that's something I got reasonably competent at. There's also quite a lot of jumping between sort of... I found that most of the time I was either on slow down mode if I was issuing orders and trying to fiddle with the ship, or I'd go on to double speed mode if while, I, while, the, while the gunfire was going on and I was just waiting for things to happen. Um, normal speed I didn't seem to use very much, which was quite interesting. But eventually you do more and more and more damage to the enemy ships, and eventually either they or you will explode. The other thing you've got to worry about is all these fighters that are buzzing around. They do quite a lot of damage, and they tend to, you tend to get quite large numbers of them because each one of these um, enemy ships will launch six of them. The point defense guns are pretty good at about taking those down, but it does take a little while to wear through them all. And if the fighters aren't on the right, on the correct side of the ship, so the, so the point defense guns can see them, then you can't shoot them down. So sometimes you do have to worry about trying to trying to point your ship in the right direction to be able to shoot the fighters down otherwise they can just sort of rake back and forth across the full length of your ship without without uh, picking up any significant damage 
So yeah, I think I need to spend a, quite a bit more time playing around with the combat and getting a bit better at it. And then I'm, I'm sure it'll it'll advance and get a lot more interesting in the future. This is where the armor comes in that I mentioned earlier. So you can put armor on your um, on on your ship in order to make it a bit a bit tougher and able to withstand a bit more damage. But it does seem to be extremely expensive. So I haven't been able to significantly armor one of my ships yet. So far, it's just been sort of put a little bit down the side of it where you expect most of the damage to come in from and hope for the best. So this has been a um, a quick overview of the game. I've mostly talked about the um, the the trading side of it and the, the shipbuilding because I, sp I think I spent most of my time doing that and at the moment that feels like the meat of the game although the combat is quite fun too. If you want to see a bit more of the combat then I suggest you go and check out the, uh, the recording of the stream. The Probably the last hour or so of it, maybe the last couple, hour and a half, is where I'm doing Doing combat and, and building up, build, trying to build up combat ships. So to give you an idea of what, what was going, what was going on there, um, it's a little bit different to what I was doing in, in, in this video, but it's it's the same sort of general idea. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I will be doing another stream of it next week because I think there's still a couple of areas I haven't really explored properly. Uh, so I want I want to try mining and I want to try sort of be doing sort of taxi missions as well, which I touched on in this video, but I haven't really done properly yet. Um, and then after that, well, I'm on holiday the week after that, but then I'm hoping that maybe the week after there'll have been another update um, come out and there'll be some extra content for me to go out and explore and have a look around. So I'll, um, I'll be producing another stream and another video then when we, once we see what's, what's available. So I hope you'll enjoy, come, come back and enjoy those. There's the uh, Wednesday night stream as well when I'm playing uh, Factorio Space Exploration. And I suspect there's enough of a sort of overlap between those two games that hopefully that'll appeal to you as well. But that's something else to come along for. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you've enjoyed this video as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.